Joanna Rivera. I'm a conservator and collections manager, and I work at the H. M. Hanley Project. And it's a Civil War submarine that sank in 1864, and it was raised in the year 2000. And now we have the submarine, and we have excavated all the artifacts and human remains for the past 16 years. So what we have here is basically all the artifacts from the submarine. So we have basically uh, wool, um, textile, wood, uh, leather, some horn, and materials like that, rope. And um, these are storage containers that they will use for shipping industry. So um, <clears throat> we have a specific AC unit just for this container. And then we designed the furniture with Patterson Pope. So our big materials and some really fragile materials will be uh, store here in a safety way. And the design is made for our artifacts. Since our collection is not going to grow like other museums, they grow a lot, we cannot have a set number of artifacts already that we have excavated from the submarine. So we know how much we need it in terms of furniture and really big things like the benches that they are really long. Uh, they build uh, furniture specially for that, so we could fit it. it the same with the metals uh, storage room, we have really, really heavy artifacts and they were also built for that. Here we have textiles that we have excavated from the submarine. And the textiles are kind of uh, really difficult to do because they're really, really fragile you can really manipulate them outside of the water. Everything within the submarine is waterlogged or really corroded. So imagine the submarine has, was in underwater for 136 years. So all the water got absorbed in the organic materials, wood absorbed all the water, textiles did. So we had to slowly remove that water without having shrinkage or warping or anything like that. But at the same time, textile is just so fragile that we can't remove it out of a vat with water. So the block leaves that were removed from the submarine, basically they're just block of sediment and matrix containing artifacts and textile and some human remains from the crew members. They were excavated in the lab, um, everything done underwater, and then we slowly unfolded the textile, removed artifacts, and then we had to do the cleaning process the rinsing process and drying, and now they're in storage. So now the textile that is conserved uh, and it's been dried, you basically change states from completely waterlogged to dry. So they had a very specific storage environment and they have gone through chemical treatments as well. So it needs to be really uh, stable. So before we used to have these boxes stuck on the old furniture. And now we have these textile drawers. It's so much easier to access to them without having to remove the box, open the lid, put it on a table. Now I just pull the drawer and it's, it's much easier. We still use some acid free materials um, uh, to, to be able to, to cover them from, and they don't get any light. So then we're not a museum, so nothing is on exhibit right now. So everything gets stored here to uh, the environment they need. What we have here, it's the part of a vest. It was completely uh, covered in sediment and embedded in sediment. It wasn't unfolded like that. It was just kind of a bit mat of textile concretion and, and uh, artifacts because he had his watch, he had a couple of jewelry on his pocket, so all that was together. So um, this is the part where you put the arm, it's just the half top of the vest. Here you have your neckline and your bottom line. So that's the front. And here we have the other side, but it's the interior of the vest, if you want. And we have the pocket of the vest. Here is the bottom line. And those lines that you see, they're just sediment. 
I didn't want to remove it. And the reason is that the stitching is still there for the liner. And the cotton stitches are just sitting on the wool. It doesn't go through it. So if I try to clean that sediment, I will completely uh, eliminate uh, the cotton stitches. That's why I kept it like that. But imagine that color, that's just sediment all covered like that. So all that had to be cleaned out. So that's what we have here. It's the best preserved uh, in terms of clothing items that we have. Here we have our benches. The crew members of the submarine sat on the port side, on one side of the submarine, and we have benches going all along the hall on the port side. Um, so we have three planks, and they were way too big to store anywhere. So while they were done and we were building the storage unit, we had to keep them in uh, these sow horses, I call and we put kind of trays on top, and that's where they were kept until we could have this finished. Because they were done with the conservation treatment, but we needed to put them somewhere. So now <coughs> they're stored here, and they're for their length, so we don't have to worry about that. And they also have a stable environment. And the shelves are, you can, adjust them with the height that you need. And on top we put other wood and materials from the submarine that they were also too big for any other type of shelf. Here are really small artifacts like um, have a horn comb, I don't know if you can see it. They have the individual packaging so it's easier for us to manipulate since they're that small. We have uh, matches. They, we found four, four pipes inside, and we know that they smoke them because the matches are burned. So I doubt they will smoke while they were cranking the submarine. Probably when they will rest, they will just open their hatches and smoke their pipe. And we have all kinds of wood materials. We have the shoes. We have the 16 shoes of the crew members and um, belts. We have some uh, wooden shims and wedges for the keel blocks of the submarine as well that were made of wood. So they were also stored here. Well, I like our custom made uh, cabinets. Um, the, having the working table really helps. Some of the artifacts are packed in a special way. And let me see, I have one here. So for instance, we have a rubber gasket that it doesn't really react well with light or oxygen or changes of humidity. So these guys packed in a special oxygen-free microenvironment. And in order to maintain the humidity inside to that good humidity, 50, 40 to 50 percent, we packed it in the room. So whatever humidity we have now, it will be within this package. Whereas if, if we pack it in the lab, it will be whatever we have, 70 percent, 80 percent probably we have at the lab right now. Um, so having a working table here and being able to pack those artifacts within the room is is uh, and something that is sturdy enough is, is what I really like. And that we were able to work with what we wanted and not just get standard furniture. So that's kind of what I, I like the most. But my favorites are the drawers. So they're so easy to open and, and they can hold weight. So uh, um, there's not much vibration when you open the drawers either, which is really important. So here we are in the metal storage room. The metal room, if you feel, is much drier. We keep it at 20% relative humidity and around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the metals that came out of the submarine, they were corroded. Uh, they have gone through extensive treatment to remove salts that were embedded within the metal. 
And after that, even though they're coded, they're still vulnerable to the environment and they need a stable environment to prevent any corrosion happening on them. If we have fluctuation in humidity, salts that they could still trap within the metal could start reacting with that and then you have whipping and all kinds of uh, chemical reactions happening. So, I mean, all this is treated. We are pretty confident that they're good, but we still need to keep them storage for a long time. So what we have here are, here are the flanges that are made of wrought iron that were removed from the crew compartment of the submarine. They were part of the viewing ports that they had on top of the hull. And the reason why they were removed is because we needed to remove the glass. The glass that was in those viewing ports wouldn't agree with the chemical treatment that the submarine is currently going through. So that's why we had to remove that. So we have all the viewing ports here on the bottom. Um, we have big ballast blocks. The submarine was really a giant air bubble that they tried to submerge and dive, so they needed a lot of ballast, a lot of weight. So the majority of these are ballast blocks that were removed from inside of the submarine, and then we have some other big ones that they were removed from the outside. Um, all these blocks have been treated and are made of wrought iron as well. Here we have <clears throat> rivets. In order to access the submarine, we had to remove the center compartment plates, the top plates. So when we removed that, they were all riveted. So all those rivets were drilled and removed. And the whole, all have been treated to prevent corrosion and we remove salts and they're coated. So we have hundreds of rivets because we removed several plates from the top of the submarine. And they all had to be stored this way. We have so many, each rivet has that location and we know exactly where that rivet came from. That's why they are stored this way. So these drawers really are full of rivets. That's, that's why we wanted to design it in a way that we were able to store them. We have some bolts as well, some nuts, some screws that were removed from a submarine. So we didn't, all the shelves, we did wanted to have some um, drawers for smaller artifacts. We have part of the watch, that's the mechanism from Lieutenant George Dixon. The watch is is in storage, the case itself was made of gold, uh, but this is the mechanism and the uh, face of the watch that they have been stored separately. Uh, these are suspenders, also from Dixon, and they're made of silver. So he had silver suspender rings, those are the ones that hook to your pants, and those are the buckles that adjust the straps. So the buckles are engraved with his initials, GED, as, as well as the case of the watch. We also have binoculars <clears throat> over there. Those were also Lieutenant Dixon's and um, that oval binoculars, which make us believe it was actually opera glasses and not field glasses like they were normally issued by the military. We have one of the pipes that I was mentioning before, and these are the other artifacts that had to be stored uh, without oxygen to prevent any corrosion. The reason being that um, these knives are what we call composite materials, so they're made of organic and metals, and since we cannot dry them to the point of these other metals to 20%, uh, because then the organic material will shrink. We have to keep the oxygen out to prevent corrosion. So to have corrosion, you need oxygen, you need your metal, and you need humidity. So we take one of these components, which in this case is oxygen, and we prevent corrosion. They were treated as well, so we thought we remove, uh, try to remove as much of salt as possible from the metal, but they were still being stored in a special way. For instance, we have tools that they use wrenches, hammers, part of 
aft pumps and forward pumps, bilge pumps that they use, we have several ranges. Um, we have part of components from the submarine that were removed as well. And here are the really heavy ballast blocks that we just stored them um, in the floor. So everything has a way how to store them um, and how to pick them up. These shelves can hold a lot of weight. That's why they were made like this. And the reason why the top we left it uh, open because we have conserved the spar, and the spar it was on the tip of the submarine, held the torpedo for the attack, and it's really long, it's about 14 feet long. So we needed a really long shelf as well to store the spar, so that the shelf is open for that. It was great working with them. One good thing is they were local, so they were able to visit us. Uh, we could tell them exactly what we wanted, the designers work with us in terms of what we needed for weight, for size of cabinets. We gave them a full list of our artifacts that we had at the moment with measurements, with our weights, and the designer just grabbed these and they put each shelf for certain artifacts. So basically they allocated the artifacts on the shelves that um, it would hold their weight, for, for instance, for metals. Um, I didn't have to just start guessing where should I put the artifacts. I just go to the blueprints and then they would say, this shelf can hold this and this and this artifacts. So it was fairly easy to transfer everything from the old storage rooms to the new ones. The people from Patterson Pope visit us uh, constantly to make sure that uh, we have what we needed so it was really easy to work with them.